Former President Trump blaming President Biden for the death of Maryland mom of five, Rachel Morin, the suspect, an illegal immigrant from El Salvador who crossed the border in February of 2023. He reportedly attempted to enter the country at least three other times in a two-month span. Trump writing on True Social that Morin was, quote, brutally killed by an illegal monster who was wanted for murder in El Salvador and who fled to the USA because he knew Crooked Joe would let him in. Now Rachel Morin's five young children will grow up without their mother because Crooked Joe refuses to shut down the border. Harper County, Maryland Sheriff Jeff Goller, who announced the suspect arrest, joined Fox yesterday, and he blamed Biden's immigration policies. Watch. I've been in office now 10 years. Um, I, I've gone through from President Obama to President Trump, and the border was never more secure uh, than it was under uh, President Trump. We have a president who invited um, so many people to, you know, invade, to come to this country. To every citizen in this country, that is a public safety crisis and one that we can so easily fix by really coming up with a workable immigration policy for our country. Um, it, it's just insane that we would allow things like Rachel's murder to happen. And when I say allow it, we allowed it by letting him into this country unchallenged. So did we allow it? Let's bring in Florida Congresswoman Maria Salazar. She's a member of the House Foreign Affairs and Small Business Committees. Congresswoman, your reaction? Of course, and thank you very much. And uh, I was just in El Salvador talking to President Bukele. I am sure that, uh, that he, if you send him back, he will be there. He will be in jail forever. Should have never happened. And I agree. I mean, it's uh, President Biden uh, has done a great disservice to this country. How could you allow an open border for anyone to come in? This guy was being sought after for murder in El Salvador. He knew he was going to be captured. He comes to the United States, and we let him in. And he's a criminal. I mean, I, you don't do that in a country like ours, the first country in the world economically, militarily. So we have to do something right now. And unfortunately, the Biden administration, the White House, is not willing to seal the border. And we have been telling him for three and a half years, we, the lawmakers, people that are, that's my, that's my uh, lane, immigration. We've presented immigration reform. Please pay attention. Nothing. No. Well... Look, I mean, he also, they believe that he was responsible for a crime in California. Uh, and he's been, and plus, again, o over that border three times, he finally makes it the fourth try. You know, and, and you, you mentioned the administration, Congresswoman, a Biden administration official that oversees a program which tracks these migrant kids that, that arrive alone at the border, told House Judiciary that they're not requesting any criminal records for these children, because a lot of them, let's just be clear, are teenagers, Congresswoman. They're only asked for their country of origin for birth certificate identity documents, but they're reportedly opening more than 100 investigations right now into crimes committed by the members of the violent Venezuelan gang that is Tren de Aragua. And we <sighs> know about this gang, as do you, that they are teenagers, many of them. They are under the age of 18, and they are violent, and they are here. And I also wanted to add something to what you're saying, the child sex trafficking, because this administration is not doing, listen to what I'm going to say, DNA testing. So the child sex trafficking industry is blooming, because when those adults come with a child, we do not know, the authorities do not know if that child's being trafficked, or in reality is the cousin or the, or the son of that male or that adult. So that's number one. And number two, the Trendaragua. Yeah, Trendaragua is the new MSS-13 of this, of this era. MS-13, we knew that it raised havoc in on the West Coast. Now the Trendaragua, what, is, what does that mean? Is that the Aragua's train? And it's an army that is invading this country, and we do not know uh, wh where are their positions, who are they, because they don't have a uniform. We do not know who are the, the leaders, because they are in, in Venezuela. And it's, it's coming in. More than 100, 100 uh, different crimes have been committed throughout the United States by this gang. And, and, and I've been asking the Biden administration to name them cr transnational criminal organization. Put them on the black list so the FBI and the CIA and the different law enforcement agencies within the country can go and nail them. Nothing. We sent a letter, myself, Marco Rubio, our senator, 
No word from the White House. And Congressman, before you go, you mentioned Marco Rubio, uh, a name mentioned about a possible vice presidential pick for former President Trump. We'll know at the convention. <laughs> One of the yeah. things that President Trump uh, it seems to be really garnering is the Hispanic vote and taking that away from President Biden. You're seeing that in Florida, but why? Explain to us why. Well, you know, it will be a very big number one. Mark Rubio is more than ready uh, to take the position. Number two, he speaks perfect Spanish. Uh, that will cater to the largest minority in the country, us, the Hispanics. Twenty percent of the population, people that love and admire and adore the American system. Don't I know it? Marco and myself, we are first generation Americans. Come, we come from. Uh, a political refugees' families. Our parents fled socialism, and and look, look what this country has given us. And Marco is the perfect example of what I just mentioned. Not only that, he's savvy in foreign policy. We are still the number one country in the world. The Western Hemisphere look at us. We are the beacon of hope. We have the best system in the world. People want to come in, and they know that they have the equality of opportunity, not equality of results. Marco embodies all that, and if President yeah. Trump were to name him, he will be doing a fantastic <laughs> job for the country. Congresswoman Maria Salazar, <laughs> I always love speaking with you. Your enthusiasm is palpable. <laughs> I can feel it here in New York. Congresswoman, thank you very much. It's long, good to see you. Long live the United States. No <laughs> other like this country. <laughs> Ask my parents. <laughs> <laughs> One day I will. All right, thank you, Congresswoman. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs>